Welcome to Biology Access. In today's class, I'll be taking the part one of population ecology. If you know you are new to this channel, please kindly press the subscribe button and so that you get notification whenever I post a new video and press the like button also. What is population ecology? It essentially deals with the processes and pattern that actually affect or that influence what the change in the population over time. There are two terms involved there, population and ecology. What is population? Population is the number of individuals of a particular species that can interbreed in a particular geographical area. Now, in some cases, you hear of this term, demons. What is a demon? It's actually a subpopulation. A population can be in a large area and divided into a subpopulation with unique features that can interbreed. So a demon is actually a subpopulation has characteristics that are unique or that are different from individuals. So we are going to look at some characteristics of population. I'm going to be looking at population distribution, age structure, sex ratio, population size, population density and population growth. These are some of the characteristics that population exhibits. So let's start with the first one, population distribution, which actually deals with how a population is actually dispersed or spread over in a particular geographical location which is being studied. Now, the population can be uniformly distributed. If, we, if I say a population is uniformly distributed, it means that they are evenly what, dispersed around the geographic, geographical location being studied. Some factors can influence this evil distribution of population. For example, competition, territorial behavior can influence a population being evenly distributed where organisms actually have or demarcate a particular region for themselves and exhibit territorial or character. They don't allow other male of that same species to what inhabit those areas. Other uh, factor that can actually lead to uniform distribution is, is exhibited by some plants which actually secrete certain chemicals. These chemicals actually prevent, prevent plants of that same species from what growing in that particular area. This situation is actually regarded as allelopathy. You can check more on allelopathy online if you want to get clarity regarding that. Random distribution, the second kind of population distribution. This one actually does not have any pattern. It can be aggregately distributed in its area, it can be uniformly distributed in its area, it doesn't have any particular pattern. So these are actually, in this situation, we say the population is what randomly what distributed. Why other the third kind of population distribution is what clustered distribution or, or population that is what aggregately what distributed. In this situation, the organisms are actually what they aggregate, they they actually um exist in patches, gathering in different world patches. This may be as a result of what unequal distribution of what uh, resources in a particular what location where organisms actually aggregate in or gather around the available what resources. Now please take note, apart from these resources being influencing um, cluster distribution, uniformly distributed can also be influenced by resources. For example, in the forest situation, you may see plants sparsely what distributed or in some area with inadequate water supply because two plants cannot have adequate water being provided in particular they are, they are what run, um, uniformly distributed such that each plant have a particular area to itself whereby the water in that area is utilized by only that plant because the water may not be enough to sustain two large what plants so in some cases uniform distribution can also be influenced by, what, by resources even uniform distribution, again, if we have resources abundantly available everywhere, there may be no need for what? Clustered what? Distribution. So these are some of the factors that can what? Influence the various kind of distribution that I have explained. All right, the next is what? Age structure. Now, age structure actually influence, have great influence on population. It determines how population grow. 
For example, in an aging population or population that exhibits cohort where the age is more, where the age group is more in numbers, actually may lead to what decrease in what population. Why in some population the age structure may indicate that reproductive age are more, which may what actually lead to what increase in population. Let me explain for that. For example, in using the human population, Homo sapiens, for example, we have Japan population possessing what aging world population where we have so much elderly homes. Now, this aging population cannot indulge in active reproductive world process. So this kind of population may decrease over time. Why in some countries like Nigeria, where we have population with so much young and reproductive age, this kind of population, this kind of population where we have a, a numerous number of reproductive age may actually lead to what increase in population. So these are some of the factors that actually influence population anyway. And it's also a characteristic. Now the next thing is what sex ratio. Sex ratio actually has also is a characteristic that also also what influence population. If the sex ratio is balanced, then there is a chance that every male will have the chance to meet with what a female. But in a situation whereby we have an unbalanced sex ratio, where maybe they may, there is more abundant male compared to female or more abundant female compared to male, then the chance of a reproductive age getting the chance to mate may become what reduce, which actually also what influence what population. Then you will go into the next, which is what the next characteristic of population, which is population what size. Population size. Population size actually deals with the number of individuals in a particular what geographical what location. So a population size can be large or can be small. All right. We can have the population of students in a particular class, that is small. Let's assume that if such is a, a small population, a catastrophe happens and a network occurs, there is a chance that the whole class may be what? The number of, uh, the number of individuals in the class may be killed. All right. I'm just, it's just an example. All right. Why a large population spread over a large geographical area, for example, may have a higher chance of what survivor due to any natural what disaster. So, there are various methods of estimating what population size, because population size can be so large that you can't actually count them. So there are now methods devised to what estimate to estimate what population what size. So one of the method is what quadrant method, and the second method is what capture, mark, and recapture method. This particular video is the part one of population ecology. In part two ecology, I will be explaining this two method in detail. But for now, I want you to attempt this. Explain quadrant method in details and capture mark recapture method in detail. Send it, your answer to my mail and I will assess it. In my part two of population ecology, the full explanation of this will be provided with calculation explained. All right. Now, please take note that the quadrant method is usually used for slow moving objects, uh, or, sorry, slow moving organisms, or even organisms that does not move. Why um, uh, capture, mark, recapture method is used for organisms that are what, or fast moving what, organisms. Factors affecting population size. Factors affecting population. What are the factors affecting population size? These are very easy to understand. Availability of food. Human population, if you have enough food, there is enough nutrients in the body, you have enough energy to what mate and what we produce. The same goes with other species. So it goes with other species. If the, there is available uh, enough nutrients on the, in the soil, plants we absorb, grow, and what we produce, well, no matter the method of reproduction that is what involved. Okay, so these are some of the factors that are what influence population. So, so availability of food increase or Adequate availability of food actually leads to what increase in what population size. Why inadequate 
uh, food availability may lead to what decrease in world population size because it may result in competition, which may decrease population size. Then we have disease and predation. Diseases and predation. Now, we know that this negatively affects the population what, size as well as predation. Predation, normally they feed on prey, which definitely what, reduces what, the population size of the prey. Why the, predation, uh, the predat predator's population definitely will be positively affected if there's availability of enough what, prey. All right? We have death rate and birth rate. Death rate definitely what, decrease population what, size. Why? Birth rate, increase the birth rate, actually what? Increase what? Population size. Please take note again, increase in death rate decreases population size. Why? Increase in what? Birth rate what? Increases what? Population size. So we have water and shelter. Have water and shelter. Now, take note the ability of this material. These are materials that are actually needed for. Um, organism towards surviving in an environment. So adequate availability of water and shelter will actually lead to increase in population size. So we'll go to the next, which is what? Population density. Population density, which is the next characteristic, actually deals with the measurement of number of individual per a particular area of land. All right? Usually, in some cases, we use the quadrant. We use this is a quadrant of a size one meter square. All right, we can determine the population density using this. We can now say that if, for example, we have five organisms per this area, we can now say that we have five, the population density is five per what, meter what, square. So population density is the measurement of individual, measurement of individual per what you need to what, land what area all right and the last population characteristics is population growth population growth which has to do with what increase in number of individuals in a particular what, geographical what, area all right population growth you know growth in in an organism is what increase in what size or weight some will say irreversible increase so but in this case we are not talking about that we're talking about in ecology we are talking about we are talking about population growth. We are talking about increase in the number of individuals. How do the number of individuals increase? Are they increasing exponentially, logistically, or how are they increasing? So this is population growth. In some cases, population may actually decrease from countries as from countries in terms of Homo sapiens species. They are experiencing what decrease in population. So it's not just growth. It might also what decrease. All right. So population growth. Increase in number of what if you are in a particular or location or geographical area over a particular or period of what time. All right. So we have various population growth model. In general, they will tell you that population growth rate, you have the birth rate subtracted from the, uh, the what death rate and all that calculation. So what I would like you to know is the part two of this population ecology studies, we encompass not just the quadrant method and capture with capture, it also occupies, encompass all these, uh, it also covers all these what, models of what, population growth, population growth. We have various models, exponential growth model, logistic and all that. Now, the second assignment in this video, I would like you to explain the first five models Exponential growth model, logistic, number three, number four, and the fifth model stated here. Explain, send your answer in detail to my mail, which will be provided in request for my mail in the comment section, and it will be provided. In, in the part two of this video, I will explain various models as well as details of what population what growth rate. So now let's quickly go to Limitation to population what? growth. Limitation to population growth. Limitation to population growth. Now, there are several factors that can influence what population what? growth. That can actually lead to what? Decrease in population growth or that can limit the growth of what? Population. And these factors are generally divided into two. 
density dependent factor and density independent factor. Density dependent factor simply means that the number of the organism influence this factor. Density independent factor means that the number of these organisms does not influence these what factors. Does not have any effect. For example, let me start with what density what independent factor. In the case of environmental stressors such as contaminants in aquatic environment, whether we have if the toxicity level is so high, whether we have 100 catfish in that pond or we have one, the organism will want to kill. It's independent of the population of the catfish in the pond. Another example is environmental disasters such as earthquake and all other, uh, all, all other uh, form of environmental disaster. They influence, they negatively affect the organism, whether they are large or small. But there are some factors that are density dependent. There are some factors that are density dependent. Such factors include what? Diseases. A small species, for example, that is spread out may actually slow down the rate of, of diseases, of the spread of diseases compared to a species that is so large and compact or packed together, which aid what easy spread of what diseases. In a large population, for example, predator can, pred predators can easily what get what they are prey. So, Predation is another word, density word, dependent factor, which can influence what population word size. Competition. In a large population, there is bound to be what competition. So, and competition definitely leads to what decrease in population size if it becomes intense. So I understand that it now negatively what affects the population. Please quickly note again. Density de uh, dependent factor include predation. When the population is so large, the organism become vulnerable to what? The, the, the pre, the organisms, for example, the head become what? Easy prey for those carnivores, for example. Competition becomes more intense with increase in what? Population what? Size. Diseases spread faster when the population is so large and compact. So please take note of that. In the part two of this video, as I've stated before, the other aspects which I didn't explain well will be explained. And if you know you have any question or any area that you fear I didn't touch, you can ask in the comment section. Answer will be provided either through the comment section or included in the part two of the population ecology. Thank you.